Hey everyone, I'd like to demonstrate very quickly for you a uh, simple interrupted suture. Um, it's a good basic suture for your basic simple lacerations, something like this, uh, where, there's, where there's not a lot of tension. Now if, you're, if your laceration is in a situation where it's on an arm or a leg and it's big and gaping like this, then the, you know, the first thing you need to assess, well first of all really, is how deep is it? Do you need some deeper uh, absorbable sutures but if 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 not if if uh, but you're able to really still need to close a gaping laceration like this then you might need to go with something like a vertical mattress suture or a horizontal mattress suture at least to start it off but you know in a normal situation let's say there's a laceration on someone's thigh and it approximates pretty well and is not under a lot of tension your good simple interrupted suture is a is a great technique so let me show you real quick uh vertical uh, excuse me a uh, simple interrupted so always when you are suturing you want to make sure that your suture excuse me your needle is entering the skin at a 90 degree angle so a, a, a big mistake that a lot of people make is that they're going to be entering the skin at this type of an angle where they're their needle is entering, you know, maybe at, at 20 to 45 degrees, but really you want to really rotate it over in a way that your suture, your needle is entering at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And as you do that, as it gets into the depth, then you start to rotate your wrist, driving it through the rest of the way. Okay. So 90 degrees, rotating and keeping the depth appropriate. So there we go. Something like this. Okay, so not too superficial, you got a good bite, um, but you're, you entered at 90 degrees. That 90 degree is potentially the most important part of a simple suturing because uh, it, if you don't get a good 90 degree bite, then the skin edges will invert and the skin will not heal well. You, we need the skin edges to evert just a little bit because as you get to the fourth phase of healing in that skin, the remodeling phase, it, there's a lot of tension and a lot of pulling and so the eversion of the 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 most superficial part of the skin is going to allow that healing and that remodeling to take place without causing a buckling of the scar okay and then as you're going on the other edge you need to make sure that you're staying at that right that exact same depth so however deep you are here you need to be entering the same depth this side straight across from where you were now you want to be exiting again at 90 degrees and so one way that i i like to do uh, want something i like to do is with my my pickup here with my adson i like to push down on the skin here which helps me to get that 90 degree exit okay then i'm gonna let go i'm gonna pull the rest of my suture through being careful not to pull it all the way through. And then we're gonna do a simple inner, excuse me, a, an instrument tie to help pull this together. So to instrument tie, you want to keep your needle driver inside this V that is made by your suture. So inside the V, and with this side and with my hand, I'm going to come around my needle driver two times because that's going to help create some tension as I'm pulling this tight. And then I'm going to open up my needle driver, grab the tail, and then as I'm pulling this across, I'm going to use my hand that I'm pulling with to pull that off of my needle driver. Okay, and notice how that the suture now, I've got a double throw through there, and then I can pull that gently down over the skin, not pulling too tight, just enough that it's approximated the skin edges, and because of that double throw, it's going to help hold it in place rather than it slipping out and you losing your, your, your tightness there. And then to come back the other direction, again, I'm going to be here in the middle with my needle driver parallel to the laceration and coming over the top. Okay, a lot of mistake is made where they go like this and bite it, but that's going to basically be giving you a slip knot instead of a square knot. So make sure your needle driver is starting in the middle. You come over the top of it and you're going to grab again your tail and then with your pulling hand you're going to pull it again opposite direction from where it was the first time. So notice how I was over here and now my left hand's coming across and that's going to make sure that you're pulling it in a way that in the end it's going to create a square knot rather than a slip knot. See that? And then I'll pull it over onto one side. Okay, and it's 
almost came together a little too tight. But then again, I'm here to go for my next throw. I can start again with my needle driver in the middle, coming over the top just once. The first time is the only time you need to go twice. Grabbing the tail here with my pulling hand, I'm starting on the left side, so I need to go onto the right, and that's gonna allow that square knot to fall. If I don't do this back and forth across with each throw, then it's not creating a square knot and you're running the risk of that knot coming undone later. So make sure you're going back and forth across your knot so that you are confident that those are square knots that you're leaving behind. Square knots are not gonna slip out on you, okay? And so there you go. Now we can cut, our, cut the tail of our suture. I've been asked several times, how long do you need to cut it? How, how long should you leave it? And really there's no rule for it. If you cut it too short though, you might run the risk of uh, that last throw of your suture slipping out and you're, need, you're not coming undone. So you wanna make sure that it's long enough that that doesn't happen. But you also want to make sure that it's not too long that it gets in the way of your next suture. Because if it's so long that now if I'm placing my next suture here and my this this is in the way, then that's going to uh, be a little bothersome while you're doing uh, your next suture. So for my next one, I'll, this will be much faster, less talking. So 90 degrees, good appropriate depth, making sure I'm going to enter on this side at the same depth, going to push down so that my needle's coming out at a good 90 degree angle. Distance here to here is the same as here to here. We call that equidistant. Okay, I'm going to pull that through. Now, instrument tie in the middle, running parallel with the laceration with my left hand. I'm going to go over the, my needle driver twice for that first throw, grabbing the tail. And because my hand's on the left, I know that I need to pull it over to the right side for that first throw. Snugging it down, but not too tight. If you go too tight, you're gonna strangulate the, the skin and cut the blood supply off. And then as I come back, again, needle driver in the middle, coming over the top, grabbing that tail. And because my hand is over on the right side, I know I need to come to the left now, and that's gonna create my square knot that I need. Okay, pull it over to the side. Again, in the middle, over the top once, grabbing the tail, and tightening it down, and then one more time for good measure. Okay, so there we go. Now make sure, one important point too, is that at the end, when you are done suturing, all of your knots should be over on one side of the laceration rather than in the middle. If you leave your knot in the middle there and the knot is right on the skin edges, then that's going to prevent good healing of the skin right there. So you need to make sure that you're pulling your knot off to the side so that the, so that the skin edges are not being uh, pushed on by your knot, okay? And again, you wanna make sure over to the side. Now the, the nice thing about the simple interrupted is if it's done right, then with that 90 degrees, see how the skin edges are approximated well, they are not inverting on each other. If you did not do the 90 degrees, then the skin edges would invert and that would prevent proper healing. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.